Welcome back to Passionately Catholic. The topic I want to talk about today is, is sin, okay, and how do we deal with sin? How do we deal with temptation? And there's a strategy that I've used for a very, very long time since I was, I don't know if it was high school or college, but basically I call it this. It's thinking through the sin. So anytime that I'm in, in, you know, encountered with a temptation or something like that, basically like a temptation is has an allure to it, right? Like there's there's something that that the devil is promising us that that is a false allure illusion, you know, like in, in a baptism, we make these promises like, do you reject Satan? I do. And all of his works I do. And all of his empty promises I do. Right? Okay. All of all temptation is an empty promise that if we buy into it and if we, you know, go through with the action and go through with the sin, it always turns out like an empty promise. It's always a lie and it always leaves us feeling more empty afterward than, than before. So what I like to do is I like to think through it because I think every single sin goes against our logic. It goes against truth. It goes against our reason. And if we can use our logic and use truth and, and find the truth, not just in the lure of the temptation, in the attraction of the temptation, right? Because all temptations, we're not choosing the evil in the temptation when we choose to sin, right? We, we choose what we think is the good, right? This is going to make me feel better or it's going to give me something that I think I want that's going to benefit me, you know, whatever it is, we're always choosing the good in the sin. So thinking through the sin is, is what I like to use. So let me use food real quick because I have a very disordered attachment to food. So say for example, you know, I've, I've already had a, a piece of cake, you know, and, and I know that I don't need any more, you know, food or dessert or something like that, but I want to get seconds and I want to eat more and I want to, I want to be gluttonous. Okay. I want to over consume food beyond what is, what is needed. And even beyond, you know, the piece of cake that I've already had, I want to have a second piece of cake or whatever, third piece of cake. Okay. Third donut, you know, whatever it is. Um, and, and I think about this, it's thinking through the sin and it's going, okay, wait a second. All right. What, it, what's going to happen? I think through it and I go, okay, let's imagine I'm going to actually eat that donut or get that seconds. Okay. What's that going to do? Well, I'm already full. Actually, that's going to make me feel really, really full. Like I'm actually not going to feel good. Okay. And then how's that going to make me feel about myself? Right? What's that, what's that going to do to me? Am I going to experience legitimate guilt? That's, that's going to tell me this, this was wrong. This was an evil. This was actually a sin. I shouldn't have done this thing. This is not helping me grow closer to God, helping me grow in virtue, helping me become the person that I feel called to be, right? Like by hours later, how am I going to feel about this? What's this going to do to my character? Because if I continually overeat and overconsume and practice the vice of gluttony, it's going to, or practice the, the sin of gluttony, it's going to become a vice of gluttony. And then I'm going to experience enslavement to that vice, enslavement to that sin. And then that's going to restrict my freedom and it's going to prevent me from, from growing in holiness, growing in virtue, from being proud of myself, you know, being happy with the person that I'm becoming and growing closer to God. And then I'm just going to get even more frustrated with myself and maybe even depressed about it. And then what am I going to do? Then I'm going to want to feel better. And how am I going to try to feel better? Then I'm going to go back to try to eat more food and practice more gluttony. All right. So the, my strategy is, is thinking through the sin. By the way, if you like this, click that like button right now. Okay. Uh, thinking through the sin. So let me use another one that I have found very useful in my life. Okay. And this is a little bit more personal, but it involves lust and it involves sexual temptation. So when I experience sexual temptation, like when I was in college, when I was single, or even now when I'm married, I mean, I can't tell you, I've talked to priests and they're like, just because you become a priest doesn't mean that women aren't attractive anymore. Just because you get married doesn't make, make uh, people of the opposite gender or people that you're attracted to not attractive anymore. Okay. They're going to be attractive. Okay. There's still going to be people who are attractive. So, so here's one of the things that I used to do and, and still use is, think through the sin. So if I see somebody who's really attractive, my response should be, you know what, God, God bless them. You know, look at that. They're, they're a beautiful human being for crying out loud and say a prayer for them. You know, God, please bless them. You know, if they're not married, bless them in their future marriage. If they are married, you know, God bless their current marriage. You know, God just bless them. You've created something truly beautiful uh, in that person, right? I mean, that should be my response, but I'll be honest with you. That is not always my response, okay? I definitely have experiences of lust, okay? As much as I continue to continue to try to work on that by the grace of God, okay? So if I experience that, that, that temptation of lust, you know, then I think it through and I'm like, okay, what if I actually did have, say, a romantic relationship with this person, okay? And I'm married for crying out loud. What if I did have a romantic relationship? Would I like 
like that? Would I honestly, honestly, would I like that? Would I be proud of myself for that? Would I like risking my, my current marriage? Would I like risking the relationship that I have with my beloved wife? Okay, would I, the, the risk that that puts on my family, okay? And then carry it through. What if, what if we did something, okay? What if we had a sexual encounter? How would I feel after that? Would I really want that, okay? Would I, would I really want to father the children father children with this other person would i really want to do that what about them what about their life okay what about if they're not married what about their future uh, relationship and their future marriage do i really want to put them through that experience with me do i want to have that in romantic or sexual encounter with them no i don't want that. i love them for crying out loud if only as a human being even if i don't know them and i just see somebody who's physically attractive and that's it and, I, and i'm not emotionally attracted to them i can say no i don't want that i wouldn't want that for them i love them too much for that no i I don't want that for my marriage, for my children. I don't want to put any of that at risk for crying out loud. And no, I don't want that for myself. I want to grow closer to God, grow in virtue, grow in holiness, right? I don't want any of that. So what really helps me is when I get in a moment of temptation and I'm like, you know what? I'm tempted with whatever it is, lust or gluttony or pride, okay, anything to think through the sin, if I'm thinking through do something, and, and think, well, what if I actually did that? What if I actually went through with the temptation that I'm, that I'm, I'm feeling? And then I carry myself to that point where I'm just like, you know, no way, <laughs> okay? That completely goes against truth and goes against logic and goes against what I truly want. And that helps me beat the, the lie of the temptation. It helps me get behind the curtain of that temptation and, the, and that lie and to see the truth and go, you know what, this, I don't want this, okay? And then it takes the allure away of the temptation temptation and, and I'm like, no, this is not true, it's not beautiful, it's not good, and I don't want it. I don't want that extra donut. I really don't. Okay? I, I don't want to lust after this person. I really don't. If you'd like to join us for more passionately Catholic videos, be sure to click the subscribe button and the uh, all bell icon so that YouTube has to notify you every time we post something new. I wish you all God's blessings and peace. May God bless you abundantly in this life and especially in the next. And I look forward to seeing you again very soon.